All right, guys, welcome back to some more Monster Prom. On the last time, we started wooing our respective sweethearts and doing Belling. really Quit weird taking things. a break yeah. from voicing because my throat's starting to hurt. All right, so let's do a challenge. I'm going to take over narrating, so say Crit's voice. Everybody chooses a movie. Say your choice out loud to the rest of the players before clicking. Twilight. The Lion King. Uh, Gremlins. Star Wars. Player orders decided based on how weird the fandom of the selected movie would be. She wins. Well, <laughs> she wins. Okay. What was yours, Nets? I said The Lion King. I said, well, weird. furries. <laughs> My, mine's furries. <laughs> furries. Gremlins fandom. I, I think Crit decided. Nets gets two. <laughs> Just to clarify, you said Star I am Wars not Crit? a Twilight yeah. fan. It was just the first thing yeah, that popped into my mind. Yeah, Ghost of You, sorry. I just wanted to let you guys know. Don't worry, I'm not going to steal the fun. The, uh, the, yeah, the Star Wars is... And we're effectively cool. halfway. Let's go. All right, mm. who are you going to sit with? I'm going to sit with... Didn't you want to go for... Uh, Scott. Scott, yeah. yeah. How dare you! Why? He's got, he wants Miranda. Oh. Ghost. Oh, you waltz over to Miranda and Scott's table to find them peering suspiciously into a burger. Secret sauce. Secret sauce. What dread mysteries do you conceal? Whoa, what do you think? Or wait, do you think the secret sauce can talk? Cool. Hey, secret sauce, what are you made out of? No, Scott, my question was rhetorical. Awesome! Mine was loud! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's no use. We will never discern the active ingredient of this delicious secret sauce. Unless you have an idea, Gigi. The blood of your father's enemies, Miranda. That's why it's so delicious. The bottom one's clearly, Scott. You're overthinking this, Scott. It's a sauce made of secrets. The dumb answers are clearly Scott and all the. No, no I know. So let's see. The top one is probably. It, it's not. You don't. Have, it's this isn't based on stat. Yeah. This is purely. You go in. I want this person. Ooh, of course. Look at her, her eyes. Sauce. The clue is in the title. But what are the secrets made of? Secrets. Shh, Miranda, it's a secret. What? Shh. <laughs> Douche! <laughs> <laughs> what? In an effort to become more mysterious, <laughs> Scott has you rub secret sauce all over his chest. You're definitely into it. <laughs> um, Way into sure. It. No, let's see. Oh, poor crit. I will end you! Damien is with Ghost Choice. So... Hey, it's the wolf pack! Trying to build up money, so go. Your goal is to kill my voice before I get there. <laughs> Nick Wolfpack, kill his voice. I'm trying to think. Like I can go to any of these table three. I could ruin everyone's choice and go to there. Um. Hmm. You barely sat down when the whole wolf pack comes running over, clearly panicking. Dog, you gotta help us! We're suffocating! It's like we're not getting enough air! We can hardly talk! God, this is gonna kill me. <laughs> ah, you can see the problem. You remind- Okay, Crit, you need to take over the narrator, but just do a normal voice. No special. Ah, voice. you see the problem. You remind them that in addition to breathing out, they also need to breathe in! Oh, whoa! That works way better! I have no idea how we forgot that! Yeah, you don't either. Thanks for saving our lives, dog! We owe you one, and we'll pay you back! Right now! What do you want? We'll do literally anything! Uh, Teach Me Calculus is probably... Plus smart. smarts. And this one's probably... Uh, the makeover is probably fun. Or charm. Or charm. Mm. Now, this is the wolf pack. I don't know how much calculus they know. An extreme makeover? Like an extreme makeover? Are you sure? You nod, because apparently this is what you want from a pack of idiot dogmen. Alright, boys. You know what that means. Time for one of our patented extreme spa treatments. Oh my gosh. Suddenly you're surrounded by wolves, covering your face Ooh. with their wide, 
moist tugs. Ew. You can feel your pores really opening up beneath the relentless torrent of dog saliva and unconditional love. Aww. When the wolf pack finally gets bored of you of licking Ooh. you, you're possibly glowing. You gain four charm. Damn. All right. All right. Well, I don't have a lot of money. Well, I made up all the stats I've lost, actually, now that I think about it. Well, you know what? I'm going to give this one to you, Crit. No, no, I, take him. Do, take him. I'm going to the shop. I'm going to the shop. Okay. You sure you have enough money? Oh, you got seven. I've never yeah. spent any. Okay. I will go for Vera, then. You find Vera sitting in front of a pile of money instead of food, as <laughs> usual. Damien comes over and drops his own pile of money on the table, and also some organs. Oh, oh hmm. not bad. Not bad. You gonna keep going, bitch? This is my job. <laughs> hmm, not bad, but I prefer to exert a little less effort for my income. A dejected swamp creature slumps over to the table and adds some money to Vera's pile. Income? You mean this stuff? This is just what people throw at me to get me to stop punching them. And this is what people throw at me to keep them from revealing what kind of porn they're into. <laughs> the fuck was that? But I agree, the money is only secondary. The frowns on their faces are the real reward. Still, I'm always looking to improve efficiency. <laughs> Have you tried developing business contacts in hell? Your victims will even will be even more terrified if they know death won't save them. Yeah, but that doesn't work on the undead. For those, you need a priest. A priest? You know how my family feels about priests? Ugh. I'm sick of terrorizing people one at a time. There's gotta be a way to terrorize everybody in the cafeteria at once. And make money at the same time. I'm sure there is. This is, after all, the essence of capitalism. Alright, so we can set the building on fire and charge an exit fee. That's obviously Damien's. <laughs> oh my god, the bomb. <laughs> oh my god. Trick everyone in the cafeteria into having an orgy, then film it. Blackmail in bulk. That is the Vera answer, and creativity, boldness, and smarts. Hmm. Boom. Great. Simple, elegant, raunchy. I like your style. It's... Oh, but how are you going to trick a whole room full of people into having an orgy? Don't tell me you don't know how to do that. <laughs> is, this, is this something you do all the time? Is this something you don't do all the time? I thought you were a prince of hell. Huh? Yeah, but I'm a prince of the birdie part of hell, not the sexy part of hell. This face. That explains it. Well, to answer your question, this is a room full of high schoolers. A <laughs> slight breeze could instigate an orgy. <laughs> Although the succubus sauce I snuck into the Sloppy Joes won't hurt either. My God! It certainly That's doesn't. You, sauce. Vera, and Damien retreat to a safe distance to film the sexy <laughs> carnage and avoid the fluids. Oh, let's God. do this! Oh, oh! I got there's an additional seat at that table, but I can't join. Give me your money. I'm not gonna give you my money. You're gonna give me stuff. It does look like you only buy one thing. Even so if smarts, you boldness, creative, creativity, charm, funny, or fun money. Buy the tampon. I don't have enough money. It's the cheapest thing. It's a whole one dollar Rooney. I mean, you got seven, so I mean. You sure about this? You only you don't always use. I, I feel like this is important. It's gotta be smart. It's in Russian. The zombie head. It literally is marked with event. Sure. No refunds. You know what kind of event? Right. It'll probably come up in the next thing. All right, challenge time. Everybody chooses a brand. Say your choice out loud to the rest of the players oh, before clicking. Windows. Huggies. Um. Nike. Volvo. All right. He's not a. Buy your orders based on how weird it would be if the selected brand paid for product placement in Game of Thrones. Volvo. Huggies. I said. I said Windows. I um, mean, there's no cars in that. There's also no computers. Area. Okay, but... You need a computer to make a Volvo. Bigger. There's also no sports shoes either. But how weird would it be with Huggies added into all the sex scenes? <laughs> Actually, hold I up, mean, Huggies. No. I, I don't know. It's weird. Huggies. Wait, what do you think a Huggies is? No, Huggies is little... No, thing. I know, yeah. I know, but I was thinking they, if they made adult diapers. I wonder if they do, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. So the issue is, Huggies are kind of just blankets. But with the armholes. 
Sure. That's called a fur coat. No, that's Snuggies. Let's right? let's make it go random because Huggies are diapers. Really oh, it's oh, I was thinking Snuggies. Yeah, just hit <laughs> random. Just All right. Hit random. We were too good there. Oh, I'm still last. Ripperoni. Second half of the game. Let's go. Hi. Oh God, zero money. But you do have a sexy Latin accent. <laughs> Mining some bitcoins. That yeah, she hey. took my money. That day you spend some time on the library PCs, mining some bitcoins. This is supposed to have something to do with solving algorithms and the rise of cryptocurrency. But you guess that nobody actually has any fucking idea how it really works. Anyway, you gain two bitcoins, which is equal to two million dollars. Damn. Which unfortunately is equal to two monster dollars, so two money. <laughs> there you are. Oh, sorry. There you are, swiping through the potential monster match dates when you spot Scott pacing and muttering to himself in distress. Can't bear to see someone so adorable in so much pain, so you might as well try to ease it however you can. Hey, bro. Oh, hi there, Gigi. Do you think I'm adorable? Aw. Yes, in fact, you were literally just thinking that. Anyway, the other day I was out in the forest trying to find a quiet place and a large branch to do some pull-ups before the big sports game. When suddenly I was approached by all these talking forest animals. They're pretty big for forest animals. I've never seen animals that can talk like that. I mean, other than us werewolves, if you're counting us as animals. And they were just so fuzzy and adorable. He ate them. But they said they were impressed by my pull-ups and my muscles and that I was even more adorable. The nice little forest animals with giant heads made me their king. Which was really, really flattering. I just don't know anything about ruling. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'd be- if I'm good enough to be a king. Aw, poor Scott. It's up to you to help him rally. Scott, a good king is a strong ruler. Physically strong. If you can do a hundred push-ups, you can be a good king for sure. True royalty has been inside you all along. Why else would your eyes be royal blue? Oh my Aww. god. Alright, so you've got- Honestly, either one would be good. The second one sounds like charm. The yeah. first one is- Fun. Boldness. Mm, that sounds like fun. I, really? I did not think you? doing push-ups is fun. Yeah, for him, I mean, it he is, is a sports guy. True. So. Yeah. Oh no, but so bold. Ha! Strong. Str no. Oh, sorry, strong, but I'm strong. When I heard "strong leader" before, I didn't know it actually meant normal strong, like Scott Strong. I could do 100 push-ups. I could do 200 push-ups. That's double the amount, right? Does that mean I could be a double king? What would that even mean? Emperor. Does that mean I get to be a super king powers like flying in mind control? <laughs> You're not even sure what logical foundation for that guess was. Or even better, I might be getting a tiny crown on top of my regular size crown. What a luxury. <laughs> Let's be the Let's be the day you come to understand Scott's train of thought. Well, daydreaming about my king powers and tiny crowns before doing 200 push-ups is a bit arrogant of me. I can always ask the furries later. <gasps> <laughs> they did oh. say giant heads. Furries is what I decided to call those giant furry talking forest animals for short. Oh no. Wait a minute. <laughs> Thanks for helping me get my confidence back, Gigi. <laughs> You should come meet my furry friends sometime. Well, you've always wanted to hang out with Scott. Not too sure about these circumstances. But it's better than not hanging out at all. You gain plus two fun and one charm. Sweet. Let's do this! I'm back. Fire time! Oh my god, it's always so loud. It's Juan again! You're casually chatting with Juan, the sm uh, small magical Latino cat. You start telling him the whole story of what happened last summer at Monster Camp. You know which one of the, you know which one, the one involving the beehive, the blow-up doll of the president, and the penguin mask, and the, mysteri and the mystery of the Goblin King. Dude, I bet you the penguin mask had something to do with that event. Slowly, lots of people start joining you to hear the story, but by the time you say, you say where the Goblin King was, 100 people are so burst into hysterical laughter. You turn on a mobile app that captures all the laughter and turns it into too fun. Damn, that fun. 
Well, doing all that, you've been doing all that. You might have been carrying. You've been carrying your newly acquired corpse <laughs> as if it was a totally normal thing to do. But some people seem to think otherwise. Oh no! Oh, it's the four most hateful people in school. Ugh. Why are you carrying a corpse, idiot? <sighs> hmm, what a shameful display of distaste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a noob. Carrying our own corpses is for noobs. <sighs> Ooh, a corpse. I love corpses. Also, I'm super drunk. Okay, three of the most hateful people in school and Polly. <laughs> As for the school's social elite, we disprove of this. I'm the head of the hierarchy, and I can't condone such stupidity under our domain. I'm the ta- I'm the taste of hierarchy, and I don't appreciate such puerile use of a corpse. Also, lesser known fact about corpses, they smell. I'm the fist of the hierarchy, and I want to punch you because punching people is what I do. Hi! I'm Polly. Also, I'm like super drunk, so whatever Vera says. Yikes, despite your disregard for the stupid social conventions and school hierarchies, you feel the urge to please them. Maybe that's what this game is about. When you bought this corpse, they totally told you it was a fashion accessory and that you were absolutely not just trying to dispose of a body. But now you're starting to feel like they might have fooled you. No time to lose. How can you convince them the corpse is actually a very hot fashion accessory? True effect about fashion accessories, most of them are worn on your head. Quick, put the corpse on your head. Shallow social creatures often respond only to status. Rip the brand logo off the most high-end accessory you own and put it on the corpse. Mm. What? I would do the second. Uh, bold and smarts would be the second. Put the corpse on your head. Oh, that sounds kind of fun, honestly. Yeah, up to you. <laughs> oh, no, that's smart. Smart. Swiftly, you gather the corpse and place it on your head. Your classmates remain silent, looking at you. The tension is great. You do your best to look serious and fashionable. Hmm. I think what Critical Hot is trying to tell us is that the corpse is a hot fashion accessory. Yes, yes, indeed. Most fashion accessories are worn on your head. Hats, glasses, earrings, hats. I think it's cool how they're wearing a corpse on their head and they're still, like, really cool about it. Fuck, I'm like big time drunk. Like tomorrow my hangover, we're have a hangover. Wait, am I tripping or is Critical Hot wearing a corpse on their head? I mean, I did a bunch of super shrooms earlier, so I might be tripping. Remember kids, winners don't use drugs. <laughs> You're not tripping, Polly. Well, you are tripping, but Critical Hot is in fact wearing a corpse on their head. And you know what? They're doing it in such a confident way. I hereby conclude that a corpse counts as a very hot fashion accessory. <laughs> it would also be a pretty convenient way of disposing that, disposing the many corpses my ventures might or might not produce. I agree. Confidence is what really counts when deciding if something makes for a good accessory, even if that something is completely not hygienic nor healthy. <laughs> <laughs> and so all of them signed the decree that establishes a corpse as an acceptable fashion accessory, as high school social bureaucracy requires. Today's a bright day to have a corpse in your possession. You gain plus two charm and plus one smarts. Nice. That's been All right. All right. Um, so let's see. What do we have options-wise? Get some money. Um, no, you can't. Ghost. Oh, the library's done? Ah. She already did it. It doesn't show the people when I do it. Yeah. Uh, Let's see, boldness, creativity, charm. I could, let's see. Smarts, boldness, creativity, or charm. I could use a bit more charm, I think. Oh, that's dodgeball, right? Yeah. All right, today, that day an epic dodgeball match takes place, but the match isn't as important as the human interactions within it. You're at your peak when you decide to go for the overkill and wink at one of your teammates. Totally mesmerized, it's the most epic wink ever. Damn, you know how to win over people's hearts. You gain plus two charm. <laughs> in the middle of everything, a portal opens up and swallows Vera, Polly, and Liam. You dive in to rescue them, and straight into... Oh no. <laughs> the season finale of the Interdimensional Bachelor. <sighs> Good lord. <sighs> Welp, 
Help! I'm in danger of spreading my eyes from rolling them so hard. Why do I have three voices in this fucking cutscene? <laughs> yes! Would you like oh me to take over Oh my god! One? We're on a game show? Yes, indeed! Tonight, you three will answer a series of trivial, I mean trivia questions. Whoever gets the most points becomes my... I'm gonna win! I don't even care what the prize is! You're... What? Your, your what? Your wife? What a revolutionary premise. Revolting. Revolting. <laughs> I'm tired. So you're saying we're supposed to respond to a series of questions and scenarios, or answer, our answers to which will make us more or like le or less likely to achieve a romantic outcome with you. That's extremely problematic. I can't think of anyone who would ever want to play such a tawdry <laughs> dating game. Everybody stop raising their raising reasonable concerns so I can hear the first question. That's the spirit. Question number one. Describe your idea of marriage proposal. But before Polly can answer, you buzz in yourself. Now it's your chance to give an answer that will end the competition and send the prince packing. <laughs> I didn't realize I was still doing this. Uh, I present you with my grandmother's wedding ring, still attached to my naked grandmother, or jaw hostages, bees pour out. Um, I mean, you got I pretty rounded stats. Yeah, I, I really want to get the bees just to see where this goes, so I'm going to take the chance. Oh. <laughs> Look at all their faces! <laughs> Wait, why were there bees inside your mouth? You fool! Your childish prank has destabilized the fabric of this pocket dimension! It's coming apart around us! Ah, help! My shoes are turning into lizards! I like those shoes! What's this? I... All the money in my wallet has turned into moths. You'll pay for this. Oof. No part of me is turning into animals, but I suddenly care about things. Question mark, exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point. If this is all your fault, why didn't you just answer with words? Why did it have to be bees? <laughs> but you can't take back the past. You spend the next thousand years traversing various horrifying dimensions with the prince and your three pissed off friends. No time has passed when you turn home, but you never forget. And Liam, Vera, and Polly will never forget. <laughs> Lose minus two fun and minus one charm. Why did it have to be bees? I lost boldness, fun, and charm. Damn. You didn't lose boldness. Yeah. I lost boldness on the answer. No, you failed boldness. No, I had nine before, didn't I? No. No, no okay. you had seven. Um, but sure. Damn, that hurt me all over. Ooh. Uh, but you gotta make those jaw hinges bees come out yeah, is I mean, I really good. I not pick it, so. Oldness. I would have picked the naked grandma. Smarts or... It, it was the smart choice. I love your costume. <laughs> that day, while we were rehearsing for the class play, you are struck by the lightning of inspiration. You come up with the ultimate nickname for yourself. You tell everyone to call you by it, also known as one of the seven most douchebaggish moves in the world. But the nickname is so awesome, inventive, and appropriate that people decide to go with it. Fight the feet! You gain plus two creativity. We the devs dare you to actually come up with a nickname <laughs> for yourself and ask the other players to call you by that name until the end of the. Alright, it's come up with one. I can't create things. Nick, what's your nickname? I don't know. <laughs> what's your nickname? I you are a... Dragon Head. <laughs> Uh. Okay, so now drag we're just... on. All right, drag on. Uh. Branda, oblivious to everything that's happened, approaches you weeping. Oh, uh, disgraceful! Have you seen the news? The most dreadful thing has happened. The Lemurian monarchy has been overthrown. King Kraken no longer sits upon the throne of Golden Baby School. Didn't they say that a long time ago? Well, 
these filthy revolutionaries are saying he stole their daughters and ate their sons and forced everyone to work for free in the uranium mines. <laughs> so we made a few generous financial decisions. That's no reason to depose him. If some innocent kidnapping and slave labor was enough to get the peasants in an uproar, I shudder to think of my own kingdom. <laughs> Do you think my people might resent being forced to hold up the corner of the palace where the foundation is going? <laughs> Do you think the 100% income tax and the random cannonballs they fire into the villages might be taken as something other than expressions of goodwill? <laughs> Could this plague of civil unrest infect to my own domain? Oh, oh perish the thought! I'm inconsolable. <laughs> Console me. How might I safeguard my kingdom against the fate of good King Kraken? <laughs> Duh, replace all your subjects with mindless robots. I built a robot army a few months ago and I still have the plans. That is definitely smart. <laughs> Which you are not. Oh my god, I think it's both. Uh, uh, well, the other one's boldness, so. Probably. Give all, I think that's fun. Ooh. I think I'm screwed. Give all your subjects belly rubs. Fishes love belly rub. Well, you're, oh, you're no God! Oh, but she... Ooh. She's like, a fish. But she might like it if it's bold and creative what and charming. Bold, like, basically, you have three stats that are good for the six, <gasps> possibly. Oh, yes! charming. No, they don't. Fish hate belly rubs. Which is what makes the this the perfect plan. I'll have my royal henchmen spread through the kingdom, rubbing every belly in sight. A fish's belly houses its most delicate sensory organs. They'll become, they'll be overcome with pain and terror. Now I'm wondering if that's true, if it's... I think it is. Which will remind them of what unites them all. The ability to be murdered at any time by me. <laughs> Oh I would never have hit upon this idea without your clever advice. You truly are wise. What I'm saying is that whatever atrocities I now commit are your responsibility. <laughs> whatever. Fish piss you off anyway. You drown your guilt in whiskey and gain plus two boldness and plus one fun. Hey, I'm not one fun anymore. Yay! That was good. Something happened to... GG! Let's go. Just remember, I chose you last time. <laughs> there you are, minding your own business in a spying on your classmate's way when suddenly... Hey, Gigi, you're some kind of... You're sort of a loser sometimes, right? Um, sure. And you hang out with those other losers like Ghost, right? Because Ghost is a total loser. Damn. Damn, Vera. Who I happen to maybe be developing yes. feelings Aww. for. The bees have not ruined this. <laughs> the bees did not. I can't explain it. There are these nowhere near as attractive or wealthy or as ruthless as I am. And yet I find myself so inexplicably drawn to them. I think it's their eyes. It's like there's real depth there. Like they're hiding some sort of secret. What do you think it is? Something wonderful or something totally lame? Oh, you can screw them over! Oof. All right. The secret behind Ghost Eyes is <laughs> the a secret. That book has changed their life, and their business sense and self confidence is on point. The secret behind Ghost Eyes is oh, the secret God. of communism. Oh, Ghost, you need to stop her from clicking that one. Ownership of material goods or individual entrepreneurship so, of any kind. So if you want to screw Ghost over, you choose the bottom one. I will choose want. only choices benefiting you if you pick the top one. Now, also, as a note, you two are sitting on the same couch. He can physically click number one. <laughs> I don't think Ghost He would can. break my finger. Oh, I totally would. <laughs> I totally would. And I'd make his life a living hell while I'm on painkillers. Uh, but you like my eyes. They're beautiful because they're blue, ghost. Number one. Come on, do it. Do it. Number one. 
Screw him over! Do number one! It's not a competition. You don't need to get her... Unless like, you want to date Vera. No. Well, then what do you care? <laughs> Flip a coin. <laughs> help me and hold I'll up, help Hold you. up, hold up, hold up. I'm going to roll a DR D6. Agent. I'm going to roll a D6. One through three, uh, number one. Four through six, number two. Ready? No. She doesn't want to do it. Redeem me from the bees. Aw. Yes. The Secret, I loved that book. Any publication that puts me in a position to once again assert my superiority over others with hard work can win me over in a heartbeat. And any monster who reads that kind of book is out to get something for themselves. In this case, possibly me. Or... <laughs> I like a monster who isn't afraid to chase down what they want, and we know I'm not too easily won over. I mean, who doesn't like bees? Bee? <laughs> bees. <laughs> Maybe they have a chance with me after all. Uh, Ghost, you destabilized their fort. Vera and Ghost, prom royalty. Aww. I need some way better stats if I'm gonna pull this off. <laughs> It has a nice ring to it. Thanks, Gigi. No problem. Maybe they'll let you be part of the prom court, even if they're if you're just a jester or something. You gain plus three fun. Nice. Wow. That's some pretty solid stats. Yeah. I think you have the best out of all of us. Challenge. All right. Challenge time. Everybody chooses something bad. Say your choice out loud oh. to the rest of players before clicking. Okay. Um... <clears throat> Eating bees. Your dog dying. Ooh. Root canal. Ghost jokes. Wow, that's... Oh, wow. Go for the <laughs> pandering points. All right. Play is based on how interesting it would be if that selected thing was a key component of a supervillain's plan in a movie. <gasps> Your dog dying. Wait, that's literally... Keon... That, wait, no, that's John Wick. Yeah. That's literally just John Wick. Who's John Wick? And that was a pretty good movie. It basically is, uh, who is it? Bruce Willis just killing everybody for an no, hour? No, Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves, oh, okay. okay. I don't know actors. So Ghost, wa Ghost was... Gigi was dog dying. I was eating bees. I was root canal. <laughs> and this was Ghost Jokes. What will be the most interesting supervillain plan? If it was the key component. Ghost jokes. I feel like ghost jokes would be number one. But that really wouldn't be interesting. It'd be boring. Ooh. <laughs> Me! I agree with GG. <laughs> yeah, of Do course I... you agree, because you want number one. <laughs> I've been fourth like twice in a row, damn it. All right, we can give that. All right, two second. Dog dying, eating bees, or... Root canal. I mean, I, Root canal. I, eating bees, is, I actually think... I mean, that's... people eat bees. That's a thing. Yes, but imagine it being the super People also get plan. root canals. True. But no, he could be using a root canal to plant a bomb in the president's head. Who's with wow. root canal? Me. I'm pretty sure a movie has had that right. plot. Go ahead. Wait, what? Is it root canal? Yeah. I'll go last. Gigi can go before me. Aww. Hey, you helped me out. <laughs> Last cycle. Yay. Um, sure. Money. Lovecraftian Prince needs your assistance. That day you spent some time on the library's PC sending malicious spam emails in the hope of stealing other people's money. It doesn't sound very nice, but who's really the one to blame if they respond to such a blatant scam? You lose minus 10 karma, which isn't a stat in this game, so who cares? And you gain plus two money. You're minding your own business when Miranda comes rushing up to you, clearly distraught. Again? Most terrible news, friend. I've just watched the documentary <laughs> Game of Thrones and I'm here for my own royal family. I did not realize how sus susceptible we might be to random acts of treacherousness or how often we romance our siblings. What? Yeah, have you watched Game of Thrones? <laughs> yeah. What was that horror. noise? What was that? I don't want to be shot in the chest by a crossbow while sitting on the toilet. That doesn't sound proper at all. She's blushing. Please help me put my poor mind at ease. How can I possibly possibly identify potential traitors in my court? 
Just keep an eye out for the classic signs. Shifty eyes, hooded black cloaks, ordering knives in bulks. Pretty much everybody is a traitor. Just spin the bottle and whoever it points at, kill them. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. So boring. Yeah! Miranda is so excited <laughs> by her advice that she skips out on school to guilt try it out. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Miranda is so excited by your advice she decides to skip out of on school to go try it out immediately. The next day she finds you in the hall clearly overwhelmed. <laughs> The most, most wondrous, glorious news, friend. The traitor is caught. The kingdom is saved. If not for your shrewd method of detecting, I might never have discovered the treachery of Balthazar the Loyal. Aww. He raised me from an <laughs> infant, tried to teach me right from wrong, never betrayed my father nor myself. Da, 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 Perfect da, da, for a traitor. <laughs> it might have gone my whole life not knowing his true nature. Had not the spinning bottle cut through his layers of deceit. Would you like to accompany me to the execution later? There will be popcorn. Yes. The popcorn is very good. You try not to think too much about whether Balthazar was actually guilty. Either way, you gain plus two fun and two and one charm. Let's do this. Oh yeah. Now I want to get my fun at twenty. Oh my oh, god. But at the same time, maybe not. Literally any other stat might be beneficial to not failing. It. Shush! <laughs> My I lowest is creativity, which is theater. And theater is not the shop today. Whoa, look at that outfit! That's kind of badass. That day while rehearsing for the class play, you can't help but feel that you're not as good as the role you... You're not as good as the role requires you to be. That doesn't seem to be an ordinary way of getting yourself there, but there might be an extraordinary way. You summon the devil, one of many, and make a deal to enhance your creativity just a bit. You gain two creativity, but you also lose three years of life as the end of the deal. But who cares? They weren't happening in game anyways. <laughs> After your previous adventures, now corpses are an acceptable and quite hot fashion accessory. You become a well-known trendsetter advocating for your beloved corpses. Life is now all fancy and busy. Luckily, you have your sexy, sexy secretary to help you with all your new tasks. Oh! <laughs> M act or er, critical hot. We have a problem. If you would assume your sexy, sexy secretary had to be a female. Then shame on you. <laughs> it's been leaked that Vogue's next issues will include an article on titled "10 Reasons Why Wearing a Corpse as a Fashion Accessory Is Not Chic and Probably Also a Crime." I've done some research and found your found the journalist. It's a bro called Theodore Fedora. What should we do, boss? <laughs> it's just death. As Vogue rules dictate, the only way to subdue a Vogue journalist is by out journalisting journalizing them in a journalism duel to the death. Sometimes we need a little push in the right direction. Kill his family and send him with a severed head is a warning. Holy shit. Yeah, that's probably bold. Death might be fun. The top one sounds like either creativity or fun. Maybe I don't know. smarts? Like... Uh, oh, creative. What? Oh, cool. To the death. Yeah, because duels to the death never go out of fashion. Let me choose the best outfit for your duel, boss. Pour all your journalism skills into a killer article. And you can bet it's a killer article because you win the duel and get to kill Fyodor Fedora. Which you do with an actual article itself. Have you ever seen a man die of pizza? <laughs> not a nice thing Hold up, how is that not so creative? Hooray for murder, boss. Yes to murder, but for all the right reasons. Good news, your article is so good, Vogue decides to publish it instead of Fedora's. Nice. Bad news, your article is even fiercer list of reasons not to work. <laughs> this is a fashion accessory. Oopsies. Oops. And it's so good that you that soon everyone thinks you're a creep for wearing a corpse yourself. Which, to be fair, is not a nonsensical thought. Also, like any other job for young adults, the Vogue gig was so shitty paying that you actually lost I have money. minus one money! How are you making this money? Oh, let's go! That is amazing. I have making up one money! Uh, right. I... This can't possibly hurt me in the long run. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'll just get some debt going. <laughs> Kurt's gonna now find a way to make himself even more negative. Oh, I'm gonna find all the negatives. What if you could go to the shop and just start buying things now that you're negative? The class is currently the shop. Yeah. That day an epic dodgeball match takes place. The match is so intense and both teams are so into it that you decide to raise the stakes. 
by betting part of your charm against part of the other team's leader's charm. That commitment amazes your whole team and their spirit is fueled by determination. Finally, you win and take two charm from the other team's leader. She's now a bit less fabulous. You're practicing your very best monster mash when you hear the sounds of an argument. Which is strange in these sacred hallowed halls of education. <laughs> Lol, JK, you can imagine. Or hey, can bro. you imagine? <laughs> PG! Hooray! They made me their king, and they deserve the bestest, most wonderful king there ever was. And I'm gonna work hard as I can as I can to be that king, no matter what it takes. Scott, you realize they're not cute little baby animals in need of a king, right? They're furries. <laughs> I know they're furry, Vera. I'm the one who told you that. No, Ooh. Scott, they're, they're furries. It's a kink. Yes, Vera, there are many kinks in my plan. That's why I need you to work them out so, to be the best ruler. Forget it. Excuse me, did you say that you need help being a good ruler? I know all about that. Being a king is easy. As Daddy always says, only live, live peasants can stage a rebellion. Oh, Miranda, I'm not really sure. Fear is your most important weapon. Your second most important weapon is actual weapons. <laughs> Torture, soup spoons, razor, teacups, a knife on fire. You know, the usual. I don't know, Miranda. I appreciate the advice, but I don't think that's the kind of king I want to be. Nonsense. I'll go get you the butter knife shuriken right now. It just seems so unnecessary. There must be a better, kinder way to rule. Right, Gigi? I want them to have a happy time under Scott the First. They've been so nice to me. They've written me beautiful songs, which are about my, which are about my adventures. But most of them are the sort of things I definitely have not done. And they've made amazing <laughs> drawings of me. Fanfics. Which are very, very generous in their proportions. I just think they deserve the best leader. Normal rulers make their subjects pay taxes. But what if you paid taxes to them? Flag time! You can't rule a kingdom with no flag. Without a flag, it would be just a bunch of flagless people. Ooh. So that's probably creativity. What, the top one might... I don't know. Where's he gonna get all that money? You're... Oh, you're 120% right. Flags are the best. Let's combine our art powers to create the very best flag ever. Draw flag, draw flag, draw flag. You get into a tense art frenzy, which is kind of hot and intimate. Somehow the two of you end up shirtless and sweaty while panting and dueling. Wait. Ooh. <laughs> Wait. That did not go where I thought it would. After three hours of passionate art activity, you put your clothes on again. Because of decency. But mainly because we don't have a shirtless model for Scott. <laughs> Damn it! And admire your work. Whoa, this is genius! No, it's actually a not-so-bad drawing of Scott shirtless and the words, Scott rules. But sure, why not? You know how to take a compliment. Scott leaves all excited, ready to execute your plan. Ugh. As your elders always say, any problem can be solved by drawing shirtless people. Later, you stumble upon Scott again. He seems quite excited. There you are, GG. Your plan was a success. My beloved furries se seem to have loved a flag that was basically just me shirtless. They've declared it a national day that should be celebrated yearly by drawing me shirtless. Which is kind of silly, since they do that pretty much every day anyway. But the important thing is, now I'm the best ruler ever, and it's thanks to you. I would love for you to visit my kingdom someday. We might even celebrate Shirtless Scott Day together. <coughs> oh, damn. You're pretty sure Shirtless Scott Day would totally become your all-time favorite <laughs> festivity. You gain plus two charm and plus one creativity. Damn right. D all right. <laughs> all right. So, that gives me... So, class, I can't buff smarts. Fun or bold? I could use some boldness. That would kind of balance me out a little bit. I'm Your also fun's only five. Yeah, yeah. but with Vera, it doesn't really with matter with, with fun. She wants smarts and... Probably boldness charm. and creativity. Well, it's yeah, either boldness or fun. It's not really... I mean, you don't really have money for, to buy anything. Yeah, I'm gonna buff my boldness. Oh, back. you don't have money? <laughs> that day, you visit the bathrooms to take a number two. Don't worry, there it won't be an illustration of that specific moment. Oh, look at my little shadow minion. Yeah, they're giving you a call. <clears throat> yep. Think, 
Thing is, you don't. You make one of the boldest decisions in your life. You don't put paper on the toilet seat before Whoa. you clean. Whoa! Look at you, you crazy bastard. You gain plus two boldness and probably plus one <laughs> caucus with a slight chance of plus one STD. <laughs> I'm sure Vera will be happy to hear that. Of course, no trip to the bathroom will be complete without running into a group of your classmates doing something stupid. <laughs> Ugh, Damien, you're the worst. Oh. <laughs> I know, right? Ah, uh, she means that in a bad way. Did you really have to set fire to our entire deck of cards? <laughs> I don't know. Did the deck of cards have to keep dealing me shitty hands? Not necessarily. That's not how probability works. Well then, I guess I didn't necessarily need to set it on fire. But since when has that stopped me? Yeah. <laughs> Well, now you've stopped us all from playing poker. Now, what are we going to bet on? <laughs> Mama insane. needs a new pair of shoes. Yeah, and I derive an almost sexual pleasure from taking your money. So what's the new game? Ooh, ooh, you know, the perfect poker alternative. Russian roulette <laughs> and the stock market. Oh my gosh. Ooh, stock market most likely would have to do with Vera. Yeah, it's also probably smarts rather than uh, Russian roulette being Bold. probably boldness. Yes! Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, the stock market. I knew there was a reason I had this fiber optic internet port installed in the bathroom. Vera busts out a laptop and gets to trading. Damien and Polly are skeptical at first, but Vera's enthusiasm is contagious. Soon they're all trading like the fiends you are. I'm just buying stock in any company that makes people's lives worse. Cigarettes, bombs, and reality TV, baby. I'm <gasps> focusing on index funds, leveraging commodities, futures, and maintaining a diversified portfolio. I'm buying any stock with a 69 <laughs> in the price. Somehow, all of you make basically the same amount of money. Ooh. Oh, you gosh, use most of it to buy a mountain of cocaine, and most oh of the rest God. to repair the damage you do to the bathroom. You end up with plus two fun and plus one money. I'll take it. Uh, do we want to just right. do random? We keep kind of getting stale, maybe, on the challenge. Hmm. Let's see what the challenge is. Fun. Actually, we just random and we don't like the challenge. Celebrity. I don't know celebrities. Everyone uh, do a celebrity Tom Tom voice out loud. Uh... Helen Lutz. Who? The guy who plays Emmett in Twilight. He's big buff and looks like... You uh, need to chill with the Twilight. He looks like... <laughs> shut up. He looks like, um... Uh, uh, Wait! Scott. We're Danny celebrities! Danny DeVito. And Crit chooses himself. Yeah! You know what? I changed mine. I say Ghost Wolf Games. Player order is based on how likely it is the selected celebrity is secretly part of a cult. Do I win? Ghost Wolf Games! Do I just win? I say just hit random. Yeah, we're randoming it. If I'm not first, I'm- oh. Yes! No, no, no! <laughs> oh, I'm not last. Yay. Everyone knows I'm part of at least two cults. Ghost Wolf Games is in- Last I guess it's only lunch. lunch. Let's go. Wink, wink. God damn it. Sorry. My lunch is wasted again. Go talk to the witches. Me? Me. No, him. You arrive at Scott and Miranda's table to find Scott happily chowing down while Miranda stares horrified at her tray. Mm, what's wrong, Miranda? Uh, yuck. Isn't it obvious right here on my tray? Fish sticks. <laughs> yeah, fish stick Fridays. Isn't it great? It's not great, Scott. The fish are my subjects. This is clearly the work of the air people. Uh, um, air people? Uh... Yes. Do you not know of the air people? The merfolk's most hated rivals? Don't you read the news? Um, yes, yeah, sure. Because I totally know how to read. <laughs> oh my gosh. What? What? Well, I must insist that you cease eating those fish sticks immediately. It is high treason. Oh. Aw, uh, but I've been looking forward to fish stick Friday since last fish stick Friday. Are you sure I can't eat any? He's asking Miranda while holding a fish stick really close to his mouth, but you feel as though you've got a better answer to settle this argument. You blurt out. Haven't you heard, Scott? Fish sticks are make you worse at sports. They contain... Ball, ball drop, drop and all. And nerdo flavin. Fish sticks contain absolutely no fish. It's all garden snails and food grade plastic. Scott can eat as many as he wants. Oh, uh, the bottom one's, bottom one's like probably Scott. favoring Scott, yeah. 
Really? Yeah, because is... it lets him eat his fish sticks, and he wants to eat his fish sticks. He doesn't care that he's eating garden snails and plastic. <laughs> See, Miranda, there's nothing wrong with fish sticks at all. They're good and good for you. Suppose you're right. Perhaps this is not the air people plot is suspected after all. Though I'm disappointed that so much plastic is being used in fish sticks, rather than plastic drink rings to catch birds with. Oh, air Don't forget about birds. the snails. There's snails in there, too. I would much rather forget about the snails, thank you. Woohoo! Does this mean you still don't want your fish sticks? Can I have them? Can I? Very well. You may partake. I'm not sure where my eating surfs have gone off to in any case. As you watch Scott chow down on his artificial fish fingers, you decide that both he and Miranda have weird relationships with food. Scott gives you a thumbs up while still munching those fish fingers. All right. Oh, Chris' choice is blocked out by ghosts. <laughs> I think I've taken your choice twice now, Kurt, right? He went to the shop last time and got... Oh, no, I'm going to the shop again. Okay. <laughs> We're going to see what I can do with negative money. All right. Might as well double down. You find Damon Ver Damien and Varia, uh, Vera hunched over a scale model of Spooky National Bank made of milk cartons, lunch trays, and ketchup packets. All right. We go on through the empty side end, or we go through the side entrance, disable the alarms with EMP, and blow the save. Why don't we just blow up the side entrance, blow up the alarms, and blow up the save? Because we only have so much C4, Damien. That sounds like a personal problem. What's this thing? Damien points a kosher dill pickle in front of the vault labeled Police Orgy. Ogre. 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 Oh. <laughs> Very different thing. Police Ogre. <laughs> That's the Police Ogre. He's got eyes all around his head, never sleeps, doesn't take bribes, and is invincible in combat. Can we blow him up? No, we can't blow him up. We need to find a way around him. Well, I'm out of ideas. Yo, Ghost, we'll cut you in on the heist if you can solve this ogre problem for us. Luckily, you're a heist mastermind. Before Vera and Damien can react, you rob the bank yourself and split the money with Vera. <laughs> Eat the pickle. <laughs> well, obviously Vera would want the money, so... Well, here's hoping I have enough boldness and smarts and creativity to have this work. Ah, oh. Quick as a flash, you take a cab over to the bank, walk in the front door, fist bump the police ogre, and walk out with all the money. <laughs> You're right back to school and bump, dump half the money out of the table, totally burying their shitty scale model of the bank. What? How? You explain that you and the police ogre go to the same salsa dancing class. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Taking advantage of personal friendships for illicit profit? I've never respected you more. I assume this pile of money and gold ingots is my share? You nod. Sexily. Sexily. Oh my god. Hey, where's my car? Oh, right, I'm supposed to be... I've got your cut right here, interloper. Vera stabs Damien with one of the many... Or one of the irresponsibly sharp butter knives the school cafeteria provides. You've never been more oh turned on. Jesus Christ, ghost. Um, sure. All right, let's go goth and make Ghost hurt his voice. <laughs> You're planning to sit by yourself today, but only the, ta the only table you can find is partially partly taken by the coven. You do feel kind of sorry for them. After all, no one ever seems to want to sit with them. Oh, good. It's you. We can practice one of our spells on you. And this is probably why. Oh, don't look so worried. We're preparing for an upcoming battle with the disgruntled Lord of the Seventh Circle. And if we don't do our homework, we'll have a hell of a time beating him. The audience laughs. Wait, <laughs> audience? Anyway, we've got two spells we've been meaning to try out. Magical enhancements to help us beat this big bad. You think we can try one on you? Pretty, pretty, please. That didn't come out right, but whatever. Aw, says the audience. You know, a magical enchantment doesn't sound half bad. You can choose either one of the two options. Read your <laughs> choices, Nitz. Uh, yeah, the spell that lets you see the future. Hey, you didn't call me by my name. You lose. And also the past and the present, and you can Drag watch on. Live Drag on. TV anywhere. <laughs> nah, you want to go for something a bit different. Let's do the spell that turns you into two helicopters. What? Oh yeah! 
The choice is made. Wingardium, Wingardium double, double copter. Oh my gosh. You always wondered what it'd be like to be two helicopters. You both rise to the ceiling of the cafeteria, shattering the skylight and showering the students with glass. We should have thought this through. We should have thought this through. You just school and spend the afternoon cruising the city, murdering birds and fucking up people's drones. Eventually, you start to wonder, if you're two helicopters, which helicopter contains the real you? If one helicopter is destroyed, where does your consciousness reside? <laughs> These philosophical questions are outside your comfort zone. You finally return to school and let the coven restore you to your former body. But your expertise being two helicopters has left you with a mind more flexible Damn! than a game. Plus four creativity. Right, this is the best stats. Let's do this! Oh boy. <laughs> no, oh boy. Negative one money crit. All right, shop. Let's see what's up. Hey, stranger. Hi, stranger. It's been a while. I've missed you. It's okay. Oh no. Look at my cool stuff. Click on her. Can you talk to her? No. Oh, Do you I want thought, a corpse? I was really hoping it would let you double down. Can I just More like? Corpse. Can I just steal the cocaine? <laughs> Good old cocaine. Nope. Uh, can't steal. Can't talk to her either. <sighs> so you just can't. My stuff isn't hi? good enough for you. What a weirdo! Human interaction is so last year. Oh, I had a different. Oh, okay, then. entirely. All right, one final challenge. Everybody chooses a food. Say your choice out loud before the rest of the players Ice start cream. clicking. Watermelon. Mayonnaise. Hmm. Right. Hmm. Hmm. Zucchini. Player orders decided based on how the plausible the chosen food would be a vehicle for government mind control. Watermelon oh, definitely uh, ice cream. Come on. Zucchini. Mayonnaise. Everyone loves ice cream. <laughs> I, mean, I think I'm going last. But <laughs> zucchini. Ice cream. I mean, come no, on. No, no, it's watermelon. I mean, everybody loves watermelon. My wife actually there's hates watermelon. There's no well, I would say uh, ice cream, watermelon, zucchini, mine. But Plus, zucchini. Kind of an owl, so I think we should give crit first, and then cons fine. All right, and then ice cream. Come on. Yeah, that works. And I'll go last. Oh, two more. Are you gonna take yourself Let's on do a this. negative money crit? Oh, <laughs> you can if you go to the. No, oh, let's go outdoors. Let's get that fun as high as possible. That day during recent. I'm just gonna, it's the same word. Yeah. Why is one always here? One, get a life! You might be getting one. Why are you days. always there? Why don't you remember you just like a dancing? We decided to go uh go all in and pretend it's a new dance move, apparently called the Groovy Musaka. One looks at you and he has you to teach him the Groovy Musaka. In he no time half the party is following your steps and joining the Groovy Musaka altogether. It's a party to remember. You gain two fun and a cool story to tell your grandkids someday. Do we get more corpse action? You're doing your thing yeah, when a wild Damien suddenly appears. Hey, noob. Hey, you. You look like you've got nothing better to do. I need a mount for the prom. <laughs> because walking is for losers. And also because I lost my license after I drove my motorcycle through another Sunday school picnic. But I won't take just any lame-ass mount. I need the best creature in hell. So let's brainstorm. If you don't have answer in the next 10 seconds, I'm putting a bit in... I'm putting a bit in your mouth and riding you. Watch out, that <laughs> might be my kink. Yes, please. <laughs> We're talking hell here, so a goat. But not just any goat. A goat that's a real asshole. What about a giant gelatinous 50 nosed creature at your house that you s that spits bile and eats corpses? My corpse. What about an asshole goat? You mean like Jonas? You mean like Judas the goat? The so sociopathic murder goat who lured all those other goats into sniper fire in the Gal Galapagos oh Islands? Gosh. Fucking metal! Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, he's definitely the worst creature in hell. So sickening. <clears throat> I'm going to gallop into prom on that Caprine bastard like the spot of hell that I am. By the way, Judas the Goat is real. Google the war on goats and prepare to be disturbed. Wait, you gain plus two smart. No, hold it. Everyone one. grab your phone. Grab your smartphones. <coughs> war on goats. War on goats. Judas 
the goat. Googling, 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 googling. It says prepare to be disturbed. There's a video of a bunch of tree uh, goats and trees. Um. All right. Well, that's a homework assignment for the viewers. Yeah. Um, or not. Sure. Please don't Google it. I mean. Actually, no. It's it's not that bad. I okay. just read it a little bit. More money. That day, you that, oh. that day you spent some time on the library's PCs managing your start kicker. You deceived lots of people with a sensationalist video and impossible promises. Nice! You gain plus 100,000 money, but you almost but almost everything goes to cover costs, and you keep only plus two money. You're gazing dreamily at Miranda when a flash of otherworldly light blinds you. Oh, oh it's no. time for the, for the spirit of the river. Put when your vision in. clears, you see a great rift is open in space and time and standing in the middle of it. Greetings, my love. It's me, the prince of the other world, and I'm here to fulfill an ancient prophecy. Oh, how majestic. Prophecy? How exciting, Rico. What sort of prophecy is it? It's a prophecy of love. <laughs> oh boy, here it comes. Legend foretale a great beauty with the hair of an angel and the scales of a fish, a beauty who I am destined to marry. <gasps> that, that sounds like a perfect description of me. Could it be that I am the great beauty described in the prophecy? Well, yes, that's the sort of what I was trying to imply. Now come with me to my realm where we may play in a magnificent wedding. Can't let him get away with this, but that prophecy is hard to argue with. The only argument you can think of is... Hmm, the hair of an angel. Huh, clearly Miranda has the hair of a goddess. <laughs> what about these fish scales I glued to this handful of angel, angel hair pasta? Hmm, charming is the top... Yeah, charming. It's true. The very hair you now look upon was stolen and grafted from the scalp of Thetis herself. Daddy really does insist on the best hair for all his children, even if it angers the gods. <laughs> ah, well, perhaps the prophecy was speaking metaphorically. And yet, technicalities are the very thing these sorts of prophecies turn upon. Oh, alas. Would that... Would that I could find a princess with less perfect hair! The prince flees through a portal to go trolling for more princesses as Miranda glows with pride. You gain plus two smarts, plus one charm, and the phone number of her hairstylist. Let's go! That's not the number I wanted! That day while rehearsing... Her rehearsing for the class play, you do a terrific job at acting. Hope so. You act so hard that some of your classmates in the audience throw roses at you. Seven roses to be exact. Damn roses aren't a valid currency or stat in this game. Anyway, you check your converter app to see if this could translate into something a bit more useful. Hmm, it seems seven roses equals two creativity points. Sweet! You brain gain two creativity. Okay. After that, oh. it's part of school. Visiting Scott's Kingdom of Furry Animals, as promised. Oh no. You might want to seal your drink. Yep. <laughs> when you get into the forest, you find most of the trees have been decorated with beautifully intricately drawn pictures. Of an even uh. more muscular than life Scott. Having Various kinds of sex with various different giant oh. furry animals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my. Gigi, my royal or Gigi, my royal advisor, here to royally advise me while I sit on my my Scott throne and rule over my Scott friends. Aren't these sweet little furry forest creatures devoted to me? It makes me tail wag with joy. He's got a bird coming out of his dick. Nah, it's a problem. It is about at that point that one of the sweet little furry forest creatures, giant head, falls off, revealing a very startled-looking mummy. What? Oh no, Scott. Yep, Vera called it. Bunch of kinky furry people doing fur doing furry stuff in the woods. I. Oh no! What just happened? Is is he hurt? Is my little panda friend hurt, or was my panda friend never a panda friend at all? Oh no no! Scott will not be losing his pure joy and innocence over some furry shitty costume. <laughs> Not on your watch. Not today. You think quickly. You know how 
beard shed their antlers and then they go back talking furry forest creatures shed their heads oh my gosh thought that panda must have been a cursed prince and now you've turned him back into a person oh gosh first um, one is probably smarts second one is probably charm i don't know your what charm do you is significantly better than your smarts but i is think it, the bottle one is the safer option ah i've heard about those kinds of curses before and I broke the spell with my love for my furry friends. As their king, of course. I don't love them in the way they draw me loving them. <laughs> they are very interesting pictures, though. Thanks for helping me out, Gigi. I guess I love you, too, in a way. Wink. <laughs> and you guess you love him, too. And you love gaining plus two fun and plus one smarts. Hey, you're fun. All right. All right. So that gives me the options of... Gym, class, or bathrooms. Um, Smarts, boldness, or... Charm. Um, well, class is... Oh, no. That's not oh, the hey, shop. there's no shop this time. No, um, it's the end. Yeah, but there's that increase. Prom's I next. I think buffing Smarts might be good for Vera. I would. Class it is. That day you were astonished by some new stuff you learn in class. You thought high school was all about doing stupid shit with your friends and trying to find true love. Who would have thought that class would actually be useful? What a nice surprise. You gain plus one valuable lesson. And good luck trying to use that. <laughs> and plus two smarts. Hey, ghost. Oh, sorry. Wait. Damn it. <laughs> was, that, that was, was that supposed that to be was, Scott? It was kind of, I was going over a little bit raspy, but no, it didn't work. Hey, right, ghost. Remember that one time at that one party where you explained to me in great detail your brilliant secret of the business world? Holy shit, you do not. And that doesn't sound like your idea of expertise at all. It must You must have been pretty drunk. Or your area of expertise. But it's Vera, so you smile and nod. Oh <laughs> god, this is a shit test. Well, I'll be attending a very fancy and important, important business dinner event tonight full of powerful people by exclusive invitation. Oh boy. Ah, I have a PR person. They may, might actually use something useful because I wasted seven your money PR on them. PR is Scott. No, that's Grit's secretary. Oh, okay. Uh, what? It, 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 it's having some lag. Uh, unlocked. You just unlocked an erotic fan fiction about dragons. This is about oh, no. to get weird. Did I just get kicked? No, it killed the game. What? I'm Mine still didn't. in. Mine's playing. Oh, nope, there it goes. What? Oh, no. No. no! Wow. Uh. Now we'll never know how Monster Prom ends! I guess we'll have to find it out in the next episode. Of more Monster Prom! We're playing short we'll next. We're playing short uh, next. Yeah, we'll, we'll do short so we can get done before it finishes like that. I was doing it correctly! Aww, we never guys. even met Coach! Now we'll never get dates for prom! I was rich! I had minus one money. But man, was I fun! Bye yeah, guys. that was insane that fun. Was really See fun. ya. We'll see you guys next time.